All right, the Steelers uh, right now are at our owners meetings. They've had a lot of offseason stuff going on, but they're also considering some things. I want to start with number one, Jeff Hathorne, this notion that, you know, television is everything. They're going to make a lot of money. Jeff Bezos play, pays a lot of money. Thursday Night Football, they're considering flexing. It's a very difficult thing to do if you're a fan who likes to travel, who schedules way in advance, and then all of a sudden things change. Should they do that? No, they should not. And I'm not just saying that from a reporter's standpoint where it changes all of our lives. <laughs> but let's say you live in Florida and you're a Steeler fan, and, man, it's Steelers-Ravens Thursday night. Make the plans, book the tickets, non-refundable, and, oh, they're moving the game to Sunday? I already got this time off work. No. Live with it. I mean, you're, you're disrupting too many people just out of the sanctity of television. Non-refundable things and trips being messed up have not been a talking point on the PM team at all lately, so this is kind of unfamiliar ground for me. But I think the other story here, guys, is the players themselves, the quality of games here. Just to appease Jeff Bezos, like Bezos, forget it. The fans matter, but Jeff, you said it right. They care about TV. These players are suddenly going to be asked to play an extra Thursday game when they'll all tell you that the lack of practice time, the lack of rest, all contributes to very sloppy, bad football yep. with more injuries. Why do we want that? You might get two marquee teams where half of the marquee names can't go because it's a Thursday, even though it's a playoff drive. You, you, you know what would be great, by the way, is if those coaches went NBA and decided, you know what, Thursday night, we're not going to play our top players. <laughs> I, I mean, for me, I'd be more interested if maybe there's a, a, a way where they give him a Saturday night games, you know, instead. Maybe they – because part of the problem is, you know, like these a these games Thursday games suck by and large, and I'll and I'll complain as a reporter. I mean, I hate night games. I mean, I'm getting to be very old. <laughs> not a, you know, not a, I'm not ageless like Pomp. I can't just yeah. stay up till three in the morning tweeting about you know West Coast NBA scores. Sacramento Kings you know, coming but, uh, at you. Uh, but by the way, I just think there's got to be another way. Now they're far in the playoffs. Maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I'll get lucky. And Bezos will button. buy Washington, and then they, he will get out of the TV business. That is my hope. But there's got to be a way. These these Thursday games, especially late in the year. I mean. To me, I think I would rather eliminate Thursday games and give them a Saturday showcase after after the uh, college season is over. One other thing we're going to talk about, and that's rule changes. It would be a, an option to the onside kick. Fourth quarter, if you're down, you can't do this before the fourth quarter, but if you're in the fourth quarter, instead of an onside kick, which has a very small percentage chance of actually working, you can opt to go fourth and 15. And they put it, I think, at your own 20-yard line, and you have to convert it. And if you don't convert it, Chris Muller, then all of a sudden you lose possession of the ball right there. Do you like that? Yes, sign me up. If it's 4th and 15, I think that's the USFLs. It might be 4th and 20. That yeah. might, might fourth, what at 4th and long. long. Yeah. You know, <laughs> call, paging Freddie Mitchell uh, for a 4th and 26. I love this. Why? It's another football play. Is it more? Somebody, oh, it's such a gimmick. Really? The onside <laughs> kick hasn't become a gimmick? The onside kick wasn't yeah. always a gimmick? Well, this is a real actual football play. It is a go look up the percentage of times teams have converted fourth and 15 or longer. It's very low, but it's higher than the percentage of onside kicks. Right. Yeah, I mean, would you rather have Gunnar Olszewski and Marcus Allen deciding whether or not you get the ball back? Or do you want your stars on the field with your quarterback with a chance to make a play to keep I mean, possession? I'd rather have Steven Sims. But what about the Rabona <laughs> kick? No more Rabona yeah. kicks. I, I, would yeah, yeah. I mean, why limit it to the fourth quarter? That would be my only quibble there. That would be my, make it make it a 60 minute thing. I mean, coaches obviously probably aren't going to do that if it's three nothing in the first quarter. Somebody I mean, will though. Somebody's I mean, going like to be the you're, guinea you're pig who does sort of it early. Like, Chargers. You know, it, I, I don't know. I view it as almost penalizing the, the team that's winning. Like you've been killing we them, and now we're going to give them this one thing in the fourth quarter where maybe they can. When you're playing soft zone defense, they score a cheap touchdown, and now you got to go out and really play defense. I just would rather make it a fourth a full, full, make it an option the entire game. All right, Bud Dupree. Steelers apparently like to bring him in, want to talk to him. Would you do it, Jeff Hathorne? For cheap, for How really cheap. cheap, like approaching veteran minimum cheap. Like if you want to come and, and make a name for yourself and try to get another contract, here's one year. We'd love to have you as we work through, you know, the future beyond possibly Alex Highsmith, but it'd have to be cheap. Our former fan buddy JB was asked about him, covering him down in Nashville. Does Bud Dupree have anything left? No was the answer. Oh, no, stern. That, I mean, veteran minimum is all I would even consider. Does Bud Dupree want to be a backup? Does he want to be a mentor to somebody? We saw how ugly it was with him and with James Harrison. I frankly don't think the guy has anything left. And I don't think the problem with him is he's always been a great athlete playing that position, just being bigger, stronger, faster yeah. than everyone. There's no nuance to his game. He never really, you right. go watch him in Tennessee, guys. Like, Will, like, you watch him. He's still trying to go straight off the edge turn a corner and get to a quarterback. But I, but I would take 15 snaps a game for, you know, 1.5 million. Him or a rookie. 
Like him or a, a six, like a Quincy Roche. I mean, look, I mean, like, I'm going to be very yeah. blunt here. I loved covering Bud. I mean, that is a guy he was. <laughs> and how do I say this play? Like, I he, second that. He yeah. he he didn't he did not uh, censor himself too much, which <laughs> as a reporter I appreciated. And you know, I think he would be good for the room. I think that room, you know, there are the exodus of guys that are you could consider leaders. I mean, it's large. And I think replacing that, you got to have guys replace. I think Bud would be, for one year on the Chief, 15, 20 snaps a game, I'd do it. When we come back, we're going to talk about the NCAA tournament and a controversial call that happened today. And Creighton's not happy about it. That's coming up next right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. <laughs>